Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're looking at my enclosed trailer. I did a video on this a while back last summer when I got the trailer. I did this epoxy floor, painted it, and I've done some upgrades, some modifications, kind of customized it along the way. So I want to do an update video because I've had a few people ask, you know, what's the update? How's the floor holding up? So forth. So let's kind of go through. Let's talk about the floor, the epoxy. Is it a good idea? And just a quick trailer tour of what I've done since uh, last video. All right, see down in the description, I'm gonna leave a link to the playlist for all the videos I've done on this trailer. So I've done a handful, so you can kind of get caught up on things. So I won't go through in detail, but I wanna just kind of give you an idea. I did this epoxy floor. I did, really it's kind of a three-part system where I did the colored gray coat, I did the flakes, and then a clear coat on top. And we've used it quite a bit this last summer and the fall, a uh, little bit over the winter time, not a whole lot, but I just want to show you guys kind of uh, how the floor looks. The floor actually looks really good. It looks, you can see some, you know, if you get down close, I don't know if we can even see it, but if you get down close, you can kind of see some micro scratches in the clear coat, which that, that's just from dirt and debris. You know, we walk in here with muddy boots, you know, you get sand and dirt in here, you're walking around. It, it, it does finely scratch the clear coat that I have over top, but it still looks great. Like, you you, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. If you got down with a you know magnifying glass, you'd see that. But I think the epoxy floor was a great idea. I'm glad I did it. It cleans up good. It's held up great. There's no chipping, no peeling, no issues at all. This is almost about a, well, it's been probably nine months or so since I've had it down. So it looks really good. It's held up great. One thing I would do to the floor differently if I could go back now is once the clear coat was down on the floor and still wet, I would spring. It did come with like a sand compound that you can put down as like an anti-skid surface. So that way it is slippery when look, it is slippery when wet. And you have to be careful like if I've just sprayed it out or it's raining or muddy or whatever. It is slippery. So I would... If I could go back, I, what I would do is I would lay down the clear coat, and as soon as I did, as soon as I did a section of the clear coat, I would sprinkle some of that sand, that white sand that it comes with, in on top of the clear, so it would, it would harden inside of it, and then it'd give a little more texture to it, a little more grip to it. It wouldn't be as slippery. The walls are holding up. I just used the regular wall paint. This is just latex wall paint from Home Depot. Nothing special. Nothing fancy. Um, You know, this is just an OSB kind of a composite board, so it's not like super great looking in that I have these imperfections in the wall, but the paint's held up good. You know, if there's any issues, I got, you know, I have some things where, you know, things just rub up against it. When it, If it gets too bad, I'll just get the, the, I have some extra paint, I'll just come out here and paint over it. It's not that big of a deal, but I just like that the walls are covered. So I want to show you real quick on the lighting. So lighting was something that I worked on most recently and I'm really happy with how the lighting's turned out. Uh, let me show you real quick my battery setup. I have a battery onboard battery charger. I've got a fuse block panel and I've got a group 27 deep cycle battery and an on off switch here. So power goes from power side to here into the fuse panel and then negative into the panel as well. And then I have three sets of lights, three positive, three negative off this little panel and they're, they're all fused. So the first set of lights I have are the ceiling lights. I have two strips that long, run the length of the ceiling parallel each other, this wooden board here. And then I have these other LED lights that I've really just, if you can see, you can see the zip, I zip tied them to the ceiling and then wired them all together. So that's all on one circuit. With them being LED, they don't draw a whole lot of, lot of power, but I think it really gives it kind of a cool look in the ceiling and provides a lot of light. So that's one circuit there. Uh, I'll leave links to these uh, lights down in the description if you're looking at doing that. I also did these same lights under the workbench. However, they're on a different, they're on a different switch and circuit here. So I just have this little switch here. I got that switch on Amazon. But it provides some nice light underneath the cabinets here. So if I'm working on something on the workbench, I have that. Now the other light 
that were installed. These you might not be able to see very good. I have them on right now, but I wired a switch right into here. This is an old switch I had from the boat. That's why it says tower lights. But it's just a little rocker switch. But these are controlling. I have these two LED kind of cube pods right here. Right on top of the back of the trailer, there's like a drip rail above the door. They're screwed into that, and then they're wired to each other. And the whole purpose of that is if it's dark outside, we're loading up our, our machines, our bikes, it's going to give some light outside of the, you know, it shines down here on the ramp, and then like this one shoots down closer on the ramp, that one projects out a little bit. So we have a little more light outside of the trailer. So they're just controlled right there on off. And then my ceiling lights are controlled with the wall switch here. Take a look at my other video. I'll link that below of how I kind of wired these. But really that's my, that was kind of my winter project that I worked on is really just getting lights. Now that I have lights in here, it really works awesome. I, I have my battery, battery charger there. The cords run out here and then I have an extension cord plugged into my wall. So that way that's always plugged in when I'm at home. And that battery, it's being it's a 27, it's size 27. It almost has like 180 amp hours of battery. I mean, it would, it would power these lights for quite a while. I haven't figured out a solar solution. I know that was something I talked about before. I, I still want to do that. So that way when I'm out in the, out using it, it'll be trickle charged by a solar solar panel and a charge controller. So that's still to come. But I'm super happy with these Moto Pro HQ wheel chocks. They're set at a 45 degree angle. And that way I just stack my bikes up in here all along this side. Um, I've got these Craftsman bins. These, are, these I just store random stuff in. I don't know what, what or where I'm going to put those. I just kind of got the bins to, to use for miscellaneous items. I've even thought about doing a shelf above here and then having the, those bins sit up there. But I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave them right here for now. And then I want to figure out some kind of a, a holder on the tongue of the trailer to hold my gas cans, just so the gas isn't stored inside here. It's stored on the tongue, and it's easy to get to, easy to refill at the pump. But anyways, guys, that's some of the things I've been working on. Hopefully that gives you some ideas. Uh, I would definitely recommend doing the epoxy. I mean, it seemed like it was pretty reasonably priced. Uh, I think the only downside would just be that it's slippery if you don't put down the non-skid. Use the non-skid stuff. I didn't know how to apply it because the, the epoxy I used came in bags, you mix the part A and B and you put it on the floor and you roll it in. So I would say to add in the non-skid, just sprinkle the non-skid material sand into once you've laid it down and let it kind of dry into the into the epoxy. Other than that, I think it's the way to go as far as flooring. I think it, it looks really good. And I'm happy with how it's held up. Held up great. No issues or problems. To, to speak of but I will keep up updating the video as things change if there's any issues or problems with the floor I'll let you guys know but anyways thanks for watching the video hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one thanks